What is up, amigos? Today we're talking about air brake aero evolution. So air brakes are quite an interesting feature because they started out with a very simple idea, but they've now grown to be quite complicated. So let's talk about their evolution and what they are really doing these days. So to begin with, the idea of an air brake was that you already have a rear wing at the back of a car, often with cars. And I've just drawn a very simplified version here where you have the rear of the car, the wheel, and the flows coming in over the roof and then hitting the rear wing. And the rear wing produces good amount of downforce. Now, in terms of braking, you want to have downforce in the corners, but you also want to brake quicker. So the quicker you can brake through the corners, the further into the corner you can travel with high speed, and then you can go around the corner faster. So what the idea was is you push the air brake up, so you rotate it, so now it's more in line with the flow, and then the flow will hit it and produce more drag. So the higher you pitch an airfoil, the more drag will be produced. And that was really good in terms of producing downforce and drag because with a regular setup, the regular wing, the change in the lift coefficient would be around about minus 0.3, so about a 300 count reduction, so about a 300 count increase in the downforce. In terms of the drag, you'd see around about an increase of 0.1, so about a 100 count increase for a fairly aggressive setup for the drag. That's not great, but that was deemed fairly good considering that you got a pretty good increase in the downforce. In the air brake situation where you flip the airfoil up to increase the drag and then increase the braking performance of the car, the change in the lift coefficient that you get compared to not having a wing was minus 0.4 about, so about 400 count reductions, about a 400 count increase in a downforce. And that comes with a drag penalty of about plus 0.2, so about 200 count increase in the drag over having no wing. So you can see here that the downforce is greater and the drag is greater a little bit. So in terms of the air brake, this has been a success, but a somewhat unexpected consequence was that we also get an increase in the downforce as well, which is also good around corners, that's what we want. And it also depends on the handling of the car. So if you have really high downforce over the rear wheels and not so much over the front wheels, that can be a problem. That's a, a topic for another video. But in terms of just a general downforce, this is a really good increase. So if you were to look at like, for example, a Bugatti, you see in this picture here, the wing is pitched quite upright. Like it, it's very aggressive, even though it's traveling at speed. So that is because at this fairly high angle, you get even more downforce with a little bit of a drag penalty. So then the blurring of a rear wing and an air brake started to occur. And if you go to NASCARs these days, particularly the later generation, you look at the rear wing or the spoiler at the back and it comes up almost vertically. It's like very, very sharp. And the reason why they do that is what they're trying to do is let's say you have the back here, they're trying to create kind of like an air dam here. So the flow comes in, hits it, really stagnates around here it increases the pressure, so the pressure skyrockets. And okay, on this face, you get really high pressure here, low pressure here, so that increases the drag. But here, this low pressure is also acting on this lower surface, this horizontal surface. So that results in the downforce increasing too. So the lift coefficient drops. So in that way, with this really vertical surface, which is kind of like an air dam, like a air braking kind of say, you get a massive increase in the downforce at the expense of an increase in the drag, but depending on which phase of operation you're in, that penalty in the drag may be justified. So that is how rear wings have been morphed into air brakes. And now that there's really a blurred line between the two, when is it really an air brake? When is it a rear wing? Because some cases in regular operation, the rear wing is producing a lot of downforce and a lot of drag, similar to what you'd have during the corners with an air brake. So that is the air brake evolution. If you like this video, make sure to click the like and subscribe button. And I'll see you on. Peace, amigos.